all right guys i'm here again another live session i promise we'll focus just on colleges i'm not going to sidetrack i'm not going to go talk about anything else okay all right hmm. my girl is still sleepy so i'm going to just put her on my chest so i can be able to good all right so let's talk about canadian colleges canadian colleges um if you see my face looking a little bit lukewarm that's because i just woke up after praying i decided to just um, come online before i start my day i have a very busy day so i'm trying to get this out of the way before i can start my day good morning to you let me know where you are watching us from if you don't mind please drop a comment in there uh, your name uh, i can see your name obviously so just let me know where you are watching this from where are you getting blessed from um where are you watching from so i can acknowledge you if you don't mind um, i want to make sure i wait for a few more people online so we can just go into the details some people will ask questions uh midway so i want to make sure i get it i'm going to give just about a minute or two and then we start if you're watching now please let us know where you're watching us from okay let us know where you're watching us from thank you where are you watching us from i have nine people online if you don't mind just sharing with us uh, wilba force agbenyaga agbenyaga you're watching from central university mocho campus augustine tete ozor keep the good work bro thank you so much my brother thank you augustine where are you watching us from nigeria or ghana josephine bafo i know where you are you're watching from china uh shayan city um god bless you my sister okay Wilba force is in ghana and uh Mr. Ozo, you are Mr. Ozo, okay. Nana Justice, you're watching from Abu Dhabi. Wow, 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 wow. The temperature there, how hot is it now? All right, I should come on vacation there, okay, brother? We'll connect. Augustine is watching from Qatar. That's good, that's good, that's good. Augustine, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Um, please try and get me a World Cup ticket so that when I'm coming for the World Cup, I, I know I can come to you, okay? Uh, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding on that one. Michael Desta Sedo. Uh, Michael is watching from Accra. Abed Agbodo. Abed, your last name. I have a brother called John Agbodo. Do you by chance know John Agbodo? John Agbodo is a good friend of mine who <laughs> uh, is, 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 is in Canada. Do you know John Agbodo by chance? Uh, Ghana, uh, Obed Ofori from Akim Otafo. You live in Amasama now. Uh, you're going for your transcript. That's great. Steven Nemo Rebel. Watching from Tamale, Ghana. My brother, thanks for tuning in. Josephine is saying, please share. Josephine, that's a spirit. Please share the videos, guys. Share and share. Dominion Destiny Favor Fate. What a name. This name is full of fate, huh? You're watching from Nigeria. God bless you, my brother. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing already. You guys are making the videos popular. Not just that. We're helping a lot of people. Um, thank you, Dominion, for tuning in. NRT Humphrey, I've talked to you already. You're watching from Collegono. I went to Collegono 3 JSS, my brother. So that is in your area, right? I went to KG3, Collegono 3 JSS. Abet Agbodo Mataikwa Kra. Abet, do you know anybody called John Agbodo? If you don't, that is fine. I have a brother called John Agbodo who lives in Canada. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, actually. Ahmed Kamal. You're watching from Koforidia. God bless you, Ahmed. God bless you. Uh, we have 19 people on. I'm going to start as soon as we hit the 20 plus. I'm going to start, okay? Um, okay, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know what you're watching from. Where you're watching from. All right. God bless you. Somebody just threw in a like there. God bless you. Keep those likes and uh, emojis coming. They all help with Facebook helping this channel grow, okay? That's how Facebook works, unfortunately. Uh, you need to share. You need to drop comments. You need to add your emojis. You need to write a review. This is how Facebook shows my channel to people, okay? Um, let's share good stuff. Let's share good stuff. Opoku Imano, watching from Ashima Kanewu. Keep it up. Thank you, my brother. Um, Tabia Beaters. Wow, I love this name. You're watching from Scotland. Tabia Beaters. There is a... There is a herbal uh, med medicine uh, from a company called Tabia. So I think when I saw the name, that's what came into my mind. Prince Selassie Amegashiti. 
you are an airway, I guess. Uh, you are from Adenta Lakeside. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful prince. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. We got 16 people on now. Michael Dester. Mm -hmm. Yes, my daughter is a very, very active girl. Eh? <laughs> if I put her on right down right now, she's going to wake up and come back again. But I'm going to use your advice. Let me put her down, okay?
guys are you surprised she's up i told you she's very active she won't sleep until daddy causes her she's very active she can hear the slightest of noise huh put it down she'll be right back live all right that's joanna for you hmm? all right <laughs> So let me just go ahead and finish as soon as possible. I tried, but uh, she, as usual, she would rather sleep on my chest. You put her in her crib and she can hear the sound of a pain. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go straight into this. That's fine. Thank you so much for being patient with me whilst I tried sleeping my, my, my baby in the crib. All right. Bear with me. If you see her sleeping, don't be so worried. She's sleeping under this chair, so that's fine, okay? Please. And I hope you're not distracted. Her unkept hair. Mommy is actually going to forget that face as well, okay? Mom just delivered, so I can do it, but it's not going to be good. <laughs> I'm trying. All right, let's talk about colleges. Guys, colleges in Canada. Can you get an admission into colleges? Yes. The minimum requirement for getting an admission into a college is senior high school. The minimum requirement to gain an admission into an accredited college in Canada is senior high school. Now, what this means is this. If you have a diploma and you could not get a scholarship, but you want to come to colleges, yes, this is an opportunity for you. I have personally seen a lot of international students in colleges, a lot. They are way more than the universities, guys. India, China, um, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nigeria, Burundi, Rwanda, almost from everywhere. We've got Vietnam, Ghana. We've got so many people coming here through colleges. The colleges are so popular. And I'll tell you why they are popular, guys. I'm going to tell you why they are popular. The colleges are popular because the entry-level requirement is very, very low. All you need is a secondary school education. And you'll be able to come into a college here. I must say that colleges do not, they are not known for scholarships, guys. Colleges are not known for scholarships, meaning that you may get into a college, but you may not get a scholarship. I'm yet to see anybody who got scholarship to come study in a college. Colleges are not known for scholarship, meaning you are looking at paying your own fees. Yesterday, I was with a gentleman who came this January from Ghana, and I asked him how he came into the college that he is about to start. He hasn't even started. He's got his visa. He's come in, but he's waiting to start in fall. And he was telling me, oh, I applied somebody my sister helped me and i applied and then after i applied my dad paid the fees and then i got a visa so it's very easy to come through a college i'm going to give you the few things i'm by the time i finish i will share names of colleges with you that i think i, I can recommend to you you can also do your own research i'll give you some tips on how you can also research before you select a college and then I'll tell you what your prospects are as well. In other words, after you come in, what are your chances when you come in through a college? So share this with your Nigerian friends. Share this with friends in Ghana, those who don't have a degree. Or maybe you have a degree, but your grades are so, so low and you're worried. You can come through a college, guys. So here is it. For you to come into a college, all you need is a minimum of a senior high school. You may be asked to produce a resume, a resume, which is a CV. And I believe everybody can do that. You basically go to the website of the school. You select a program that you want. And then basically when you select the program you want, there is an option for you to select apply. And then you select that you are an international student. You must say you are an international student. Because there are local students which are Canadians. If you are not a Canadian, then you are an international student. And then basically you start filling your personal information. They will ask you about your name, your address. Did you go to a high school? You say yes. Um, were you taught in English? Is English your first language? You say yes. There is a requirement called English proficiency requirement. This does not apply to countries that are part of the British Commonwealth. 
Ghana, Nigeria, any country that is part of the British Commonwealth, you don't need to prove your English proficiency. The reason being that you were taught in English, English is your first language, so you were covered. That portion will be waived for you, meaning that they won't ask you to provide a proof that you can speak English. If you are not from an English-speaking country, say Ivory Coast and stuff, they will ask you to show proficiency of English by taking an alt exams or uh, an exams before you apply. So guys, if you are from a Commonwealth country with Ghana and Nigeria and other countries are from, then you, you don't have to worry about that. So basically, you, you upload your transcript. They will ask if you are transcript, uh, which is your secondary school certificate, WASI or SSC. If you are from the West African zone, we know what I'm talking about. And then you basically upload it. And then they will ask you to pay the application fee. The average application fee if you're applying to a college is 100 Canadian dollars. 100 Canadian dollars. So basically, you're going to be um, paying that. That is where a lot of people struggle. Some don't have the money. Those who have the money may not have a credit card or a visa card to pay. I recommend you connect with somebody who mm, has a visa card. When I was doing mine, there was a gentleman who helped me, uh, Patrick Aken Akenpaba. Patrick Akenpaba. Uh, Patrick helped me. I remember I contacted him and I said I have to apply and pay a payment. And I have the Ghanaian cities, but I don't have the dollars and I don't have a credit card. Can you help me? And I believe at that time, Patrick had an account with Zenit Bank. Zenit was issuing a Visa card, a credit card or a MasterCard. So he used his card to pay for me. And then I gave him in Ghanaian cities. So you see, that's what I did just to be able to pay. You can also find out GT Bank. If Check with your bank. Some banks wish you MasterCard. Some banks issue a Visa card that you can use to make international payment. Please ask and ask and ask. Please remember, ask. Somebody is going to help you. Somebody is going to help you with that, okay? All right. Please don't be too worried about my daughter. She likes it under these chairs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And she's not fully awake. That is why she's not active. If she was awake, she would be all around playing with the toys or something like that. So please forgive me. Huh? I know some human rights people will say like, oh, that poor kid is on his chest and sleeping and he doesn't care. Please. I know my daughter very well. <laughs> all right. So you know you have a secondary certification. You know you can get to a college. In fact, the colleges, I have found that they don't even care about your grades, guys. I'm saying this and I'm smiling. You get an F, 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 D, 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 D. The colleges will still give you admission. Do you know why? Because they are not offering you scholarships. So they will give as many people as possible admission, knowing that you are going to pay your own fees. All I'm saying is that no matter how bad your grades are, you can still get a college admission. Guys, I've done this for people, so I know it. C, 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 F, 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 D, 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 B, B, B. The colleges will still give you admission. The only thing here is you have to pay your own fees. How does it work? I'm going to give you a breakdown how, how it works. I'm going to give you three advice, different advices on how to go around with your fees and how the fees are structured. The average college cost in Canada in the most expensive provinces such as Ontario, the province of Ontario where I live, the province of Quebec where we have the French side of Canada, the province of British Columbia. I'm going to go over them again. Three provinces. The province of Ontario, the province of Quebec, the province of British Columbia where we have the city of Vancouver. These the three provinces, the average school, Ahmed Kama, <laughs> really FFF, I'm telling you, they'll give you an admission. The average college price for a one-year studies is between 16000 to 17000 Canadian dollars. The average price for colleges in these three provinces is Sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars. You might probably say, "Wow, that's expensive." Yes, it's actually even cheaper to pay for the college than to go to do a university program where you are paying. Universities are more expensive. Universities are about twenty-four thousand, twenty-five thousand a year if you are paying your own fees. Colleges are about sixteen to seventeen thousand. 
Now, Kobili Don, Yoli, Yang, Yang Sen, can we work and pay the fees? This is why I'm going to give you some advice, guys. This is what I found the colleges do. The most expensive colleges, where the fees are in the range of sixteen to 17000 when they offer you an admission, they will give you a grace period to make part payment. Part payment, partial payment. Lebo. Lebo in Kobo. Greetings watching from South Africa. God bless you. I believe you are my first South African watching. There is a Ghanaian called uh, Papa Jinfi in South Africa. But you, I believe from your name, you are my first South African viewer. God bless you. Please share my videos so South Africans can also benefit from this. God bless you. Uh, Lebo. Okay. Now, I'm going to take one college, for example. I'm going to mention some college. Seneca College. S N. Sorry, S E N E C A, Seneca College. It's in Ontario, it's around the Toronto area. Centennial College, Niagara College. I'm going to post the names here, so don't worry, I'm going to post all of them when I finish. These three colleges, you're going to find the fees for their programs for a one year study to be around 16 to 17,000. When they offer you the admission, within the admission letter, Hmm, she's snoring now. I hope it doesn't come in the video. So let me try and put her down again. If she gets up, you know what I mean, huh? One second, guys. We're back again. <laughs> You're getting used to my daughter, huh? Mm. If you watch her videos on YouTube, you know that she's a very active girl. She's on Facebook. She's also on YouTube. She has a channel. Please check out her content if you don't mind. Diaries of Baby Joanna. Diaries of Baby Joanna. You're going to see she has a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Is there a limit for applying to colleges? Float, Kelvin, Kelvin. Um, okay, so let's go into it. Kelvin, I'll ask, answer your question. All right. I'm talking about the most expensive colleges. They are located in these three provinces. Ontario, uh, Quebec, where we have Montreal. British Columbia, where we have the city of Vancouver. The college fees are around sixteen to 17000 Canadian dollars for a one-year program. And I mentioned that first, when you apply, irrespective of how bad your grades are, there is a high chance you get an admission. Two, the moment they give you the admission in the offer letter, which is called the letter of enrollment or admission letter, they are going to state in it that we are giving you maybe six weeks to make a half payment, a part payment of the fees. 
I've actually seen this myself. Now, what it means is that from the time they give you the offer, you have six weeks to come up with half of the fees. So if it is 16,000, you are looking at 8,000. If it is 17,000, you're looking at 8,500 Canadian dollars. So those of you, this is why those of you who have the money, you'll be smiling. Because if you have the money, all you have to do is they'll give you on the bank account information, you make the payment. Most people use the banks in Ghana to send the money through a swift transfer, which is uh, a service that allows you to send money from a developing country to Western world. It's called swift, swift transfer. The banks will help you. They will pay the money into the account of the school, say Seneca College or whatever school it is. And then the moment you pay, you have to attach a proof of the payment and send it to the school by emailing them that guys i have just made a payment and um, this is proof of it can you confirm if it hits your account they are going to confirm and then they are going to send you a proof of the payment which is a receipt an official receipt from the school this receipt is so important guys basically you are going to add this receipt to all your documents and apply for the visa you're going to take the receipt from the school you're going to now fill the visa forms Add your passport, add um, all the other documents that you need when you're applying for your visa, right? You add an admission letter as well, and then you submit it to the embassy that, hey, I've gained an admission from this college, and I have made half payment as they suggested or they want, and I am adding a proof of a bank statement to show that when I come, I'm not going to rely on you guys, Canada. I'm going to be able to pay for my own accommodation and my food. So I have extra money in my bank account by providing a bank statement. Once you submit this, guys, chances are you are going to gain admission. That is it for the big schools. Now, let me also go in and mention something about the big schools. Yesterday, I met a lady from Rwanda. She has been here for a year and a half. She's studying pharmacy, something pharmacy assistant in a school called Niagara College. So I asked her, how did you come? And then she said, oh, my dad paid for me. And I asked her, did you pay half of the fees before you go apply for your visa? Or you, 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 you paid, how did you do it? She said, my dad paid all the fees, everything. He paid everything. And I said, wow, that's impressive. So look at it. The fees were 16 or 17,000. The dad paid everything. And they attached the documents and they got a visa. What I found is this. The embassies take serious those who pay the full fees. They know this person means it and he wants to come to Canada. The chances that you will get a visa are higher for those who pay all the fees. This is not to say that you will not get it if you pay half. Because remember the school just wanted half and you pay just a half. But I'm saying if you can afford to pay all of it, please do. The embassies will likely give you the visa right away. So this is for people who have their own money and they think they can't finance their education. You ask the question, does that include accommodation, hotel or city? No, the schools don't add the accommodation or your residence uh, fees to the fees. This is just the school fees, guys. This is just the school fees. You have to arrange for your own accommodation. I'm going to talk about that. How, when you get your visa, I'm going to tell you how you can find a cheap accommodation. I personally will show you how, which places to go and find a cheap accommodation. So that when you come, you don't have to overpay. I found that those who live on campus through residence, they pay more than those who live off campus. When I was a student, I never lived on campus. I lived off campus and it's cheaper. I was paying $350 a month for my rent, whilst those on campus were paying over $500 a month for the same place. And for some reason, I don't just like staying on campus. I prefer to stay off campus where I can focus and study. When you live on campus, you have a lot of people who are doing parties every day, right? I just don't, that's my opinion, right? So when we get there, I'll help you. Just look, you know what? Just listen to the part of getting the admission and then I'll focus on how you can deal with the other thing. Let's focus on just one thing at a time, guys. All right. So this is just the school fees, guys. Remember, I said when you're applying for your visa, you need to also prove to the embassy that you have an extra $10,000 for your living expenses. So this is where you prove to the embassy that, you know what, when I come, I can afford to pay rent for one year. When I come, I can afford to buy food for one year without relying on the Canadian government. That is where they ask you for an additional money in your account, like bank statement, to show that when you come, you can, you can be able to 
bear the cost of your living expenses here. The average rent for a one bedroom, if you are living off campus, is about $400 to $500, depending on your location. It can even be more expensive depending on which city. If you are living in a bigger city, you obviously will pay more. So guys, listen to this. Those who have the money, if you are rich in Nigeria, you have money, you have saved plenty money, where you feel pay the fees, pay all, you will get the visa. Pray over it. There is a chance they will give you the visa. Now, what if you don't get a visa? What do you do? Reapply. Don't give up. In fact, the moment they refuse you, reapply. The moment they refuse you, reapply. Keep reapplying. The visa fee is about $150. Keep reapplying. They will give it to you. The Canadian Embassy is very stubborn. Huh? Sometimes they will refuse you and refuse you, but they will give it to you eventually. Don't give up. Take this from me, guys. My own wife, when I was trying to bring her here, I applied number one for her. Even when I was here and I was... <laughs> Somebody would say, I'm even living here. And I had finished school. They refused her. I applied again. They refused her. I applied the third time. They refused her. And me, I don't know how to say no. I don't know how to... If you keep saying no, I'll keep coming back. I'm like the widow that the book of Luke talks about in Luke 18. That widow that the judge keeps saying no and she kept going back. That's how I am. So if you were, say, for example, a lady that I have gotten a vision that I'll marry, huh? And I come to you and I tell you, hey, I love you. Beyond that, I want to marry. And you say, no, me. I'll keep coming back and keep coming back. Every day you see my face until you say yes. I want you to treat the embassy like that. The moment you gain that admission, don't joke with the guys. There are people who give up just because they refuse them first visa. Keep applying. Keep knocking. Keep knocking and the door will open. It's just what it is. Keep applying. Don't give up. Somebody has applied four times before they got it five times. You heard me say my wife applied three times and got it on the fourth time. That is me. Today she's here and you can see the product. Huh? What if we give up on the first one? The fact that you get your first visa refusal doesn't mean the end of the world. Go back and apply again. Keep applying. And when you apply, write them an emotional letter. Tell them, you know what? We'll get there. When we get to the letter, I'm going to talk about those things, how you can put your letter together. I'm going to advise you on how you can write a very strong letter to convince them that you're going to be a good good candidate and a better person to help this world when you apply. All right? Let's talk about the fees. The people with the money, if you can afford it, pay all the fees. Even if you don't pay all of it, pay a big amount of it and add your bank statement. You will come to Canada. And when you come, remember to call me and say you said it. All right, now let's talk about those who don't have enough money. Pay just what the school is asking you. If you don't have enough money, if the school says pay half of it, pay half. If the school says pay thousand, pay thousand. But make sure your bank statement on all your other documents are very, very strong. Means plenty of money there your account inside. And then you leave the rest to God by praying over it if you believe in God. College admissions is the easiest. I've seen training college teachers, people who were teachers in Ghana, people who were nurses. In fact, I know a couple of nurses, a couple of nurses in my city who were all working in Ghana and they save money. Maybe it was their back pay, maybe it was some huge money and they used that to apply for colleges and they got it. So if you are listening to me today and you are a nurse, I am yet to see a scholarship for nursing students. So I, I won't tell you there is none, but I'm here to see one. But if you're a nurse and you can afford to pay a college, please pay and come into a college. Pick a course that is closer to nursing or something in nursing. They offer nursing. Pick a course there. If you have a background in nursing, it's easy to come and do another course here in nursing. It's so beautiful. The moment you come and do a nursing course here, you know what happens? When you finish, they will allow you to apply for a license to become a nurse here by writing an exams which is a very short exam or something like that after you finish your diploma and then after that they transfer you and they make you a canadian nurse that is where the money is the average canadian nurse is making about seventy thousand dollars a year to a little over that seventy thousand dollars if you are living in ghana or nigeria convert them and see what i'm talking about so do all you can to get it those of you who have savings this is where you now I'm going to share something I found. I'm telling you, I'm reporting. I'm just reporting. No, don't go and say I'm the one giving the advice. I'm only reporting what I've seen. The Indian students who come here through colleges, 
I asked some of them, how did you raise the money to pay your fees? And then they said, oh, my mom went for a loan in the bank and guaranteed for it. So we used the loan to apply for the Wow! Their parents are getting a loan to help them pay the fees, knowing that when their kids come, they can work and pay it back. Hmm. African parent, oh, African parent, how? Oh. Some parents will do it. Hmm? Some parents will do it, but not all parents. If your parents can take a loan to help you travel, thank them. But the average African parent will not do it. All right. Now, these are the big schools, guys. I've just talked about how their fees, the part payment, and what you can do. Pay half if that is all you can afford. Pay the full if you can afford it. And just add the rest of the document. If you need help with the documentation, I'll do a whole session about that and talk about how to gather your visa documents. But wait, is that the only school? Are those the only schools in Canada that offer 16, 17,000? No, guys. There are some provinces where the fees are so cheap. When I say so cheap, not like $1. But they are cheaper than the national expensive ones. So hear me out. I'm going to mention the names. Hear me out. Schools that are outside of Ontario, British Columbia, and Quebec, their fees are relatively cheaper. The reason is that those places are a little bit more colder, and a lot of people don't like staying in, like, you know, really cold places, right? I like this. I don't like where the snow is too much, like minus 40, minus 42. Ontario is much better. All we get is about minus 14, minus 10, minus 16, and stuff like that, which is way better. These places I'm going to mention, the schools, their fees are cheaper. In fact, their one-year program could be as low as $7,000 or $8,000, maximum $9,000. What it means is that if you get this school, by paying seven dollars or 8000 you have already paid for the whole one year. Whereas by applying for a school in the Ontario, when you pay seven, eight thousand, you haven't finished all period. That is just half of the fees. So all I'm saying is this: I recommend that you target the schools with low tuition, knowing that your sixteen thousand dollars can provide you with a two years of studies, whilst your sixteen thousand dollars can provide you with a one year of study in the Niagara region or in Ontario. Listen to these schools. The schools are, I've only found a few, I'm still researching that. When I find more, I will share. These are the school. New Brunswick Community College. Write it down somewhere in your book, guys. New Brunswick Community College. Brunswick is spelled B-R-U-N-S-W-I-C-K. New Brunswick Community College. That school, I have helped some people get admission into it. Their fees are around seven to $8,000. For one year so if you are to even pay half of it you can imagine that's just four thousand dollars i'm going to tell you something interesting about this very school it's the first school i'm going to suggest to you new brunswick if anybody can type it down please do so that they can help people new brunswick community college guys this very school i have done a bit of research in my past dealing with them by helping people i found that they don't even ask you to pay half of the fees they don't they don't demand half of the fees. Do you know how much they demand if you finish getting the admission? They ask you to pay just $500. Guys, you heard me right. $500. That's all they ask you to pay. And then after that, you can go and apply for a visa. In other words, you pay the $500. They give you a receipt to show you've paid just the minimum requirement of the fees. And then you use that, you add your bank statement and all your other documents. And then you go to the embassy and then, thank you so much, Ejapia. That's the name of the school. He's typed it. Ejapia has typed it down there. Please give him a like. Gentlemen, give this man, show him some love by giving him a like to tell him thank you for writing it down. Mm -hmm. We need to appreciate those who do good work. Okay? Like, like, like what is post, posted. Now, you pay the $500, use the receipt, you add your bank statement and other things, and then... You basically go ahead and apply for a visa and you pray to God to give it to you. Simple. Did you hear that, guys? Minimum for this school is $500. And then after that, the fees is about $8,000, $7,000 to $8,000. Pay $500, apply for your visa, you're good. 
but I must tell you what I found about this $500. It is non-refundable. Hear me well. This is what I'm saying. I have found that their $500 is non-refundable. Meaning, if you never get the visa, you don't get the money back. Don't go and say you got duped. I said it. In fact, it will be written under the program that is a non-refundable fee. Why are they even making it non-refundable? With the other schools that are bigger, when you pay half and you don't get the visa, the school can refund the money to you. But with this very school, this $500 is non-refundable. Why? My common sense and my wisdom was telling me that the $500 is how they test whether you really mean to come to the school. It's like a commitment fee. It's non-refundable, especially if you never get a visa. However, if you do get a visa, they will credit it to your account as a part of your fees. In other words, they will deduct it from your fees and then they credit it to you. But if you never get a visa, it's gone. I hope you heard me. Please show with your emojis. Let me know you heard me right. Mm? I don't want anybody to come here and say I gave you information that you got duped $500 so that you start cursing me. Please choose your emoji. Let me know if you understood me right before I go on. Let me know if everybody heard me right. Non-refundable $500 for this school. Remember, read it yourself and confirm whether what I'm saying is right or not. I read it. It's there. I can see the emojis coming. Thank you. So everybody's hearing me. Huh? Non-refundable. This is the first school I'm going to recommend to you. Their fees is cheaper. Now, the second school I'm going to call, recommend to you, which also has a very low tuition, is in the province of Newfoundland. New, one word. Foundland, new and Foundland is actually one word. Newfoundland is altogether one word. The province of Newfoundland. Global Forces, thank you. Okay. This school is called North Atlantic College. Somebody should write it down. North Atlantic College. It is a legit school, guys. It's legit. These schools I'm all mentioning, they are all legit. So don't worry about them. They are legit schools. They are not fake schools. They are legit. Hmm? North Atlantic College, located in the province of Newfoundland. Their fees, I have done my research, their fees very, very cheap. Their fees is the same as the uh, New Brunswick guys. It's about seven to $8,000 for a one-year program. I haven't seen them post how much you need to pay, but I believe they will ask you to pay half of the fees. Thank you so much, Ija. Pia, one more time for sharing. Mame Abena Adolfo, Adolfo, thanks for sharing. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Nana Justice, thanks for sharing. Newfoundland, Ija, Pia, thank you. That's the spelling. Newfoundland, that's the province. This school, I haven't seen them right. In fact, I found them just about two weeks ago, so I'm still doing more research, but my research shows that they are legit. Meaning that if you're applying to them, you have no worries. And their fees is also very cheap. It's around seven to $8,000 a year. Even if they don't ask you for anything, guys, if you can afford, pay all the fees. If you can afford, pay half of it. If you have any questions, send them an email and ask them whether they have a requirement for the fees in terms of the payment plan. They will let you know. But this school, I'm recommending it because for two reasons. One, it is legit. Two, the fees is half the national price. I hope this is helpful. So these are the two schools that I can vouch for that they are low. I personally recommend that anybody with an HND, and um, a nursing, go there and pick a course that is similar to your area. I'm going to do a live session where I'm going to advise you guys on what courses to apply for. But just to get you going, if you are a nurse, find something in the health sector. If you even find a nursing program, take it. If you don't find a nurse, you find something closer to that. The health sector is big here. When you come, you make a lot of money. Mm? If you are not a nurse and you are an HND in something else, find a course where you think you can actually come. And then the one course I will recommend, not because it is the highest paying, but because it's the most popular for international students. These are the courses. Write them down. Personal support worker. It's a course. Personal support worker. Somebody should write it down if you can. This is a very popular course for international students. When you finish, you can easily get a job and you get a lot of hours of overtime. They do get a lot of hours. And I'm going to tell you something about this course anyway, guys. During the pandemic, these were the people who were saving Canada when the pandemic was. 
basically the personal support workers are like nurses huh except that they work with seniors seniors are elderly people who are in uh, like uh, nursing homes and then they are being taken care of by the personal support workers now these personal support workers were so much valued by the canadian government to the point that the canadian government said guys if you are in quebec and you are a personal support worker and you helped us through this pandemic you don't even have to apply for you don't even have to worry about permanent resident we are automatically giving it to all of you guys wow this has really happened the canadian government awarded almost everybody who was working in the health sector as a personal support worker in the province of quebec they were award they were eligible to apply for permanent resident with that struggle straight and they were awarded now in ontario and other places as well anybody who applied who was a personal support worker and worked during the pandemic yeah the government decided that instead of working 20 hours a week as students they are allowed to work on limited hours just because of the fact that they were doing personal support worker of course all i'm trying to say is that this course because it takes care of a certain a certain population of the canadian uh, sector which is like elderly people whatever you do here there is a chance that in the future when something good happens you might just be a part of it you might just be there and then they will tell you you don't even need to apply just get it automatically i've also found that for this very course over time hours are so easy to get in other words when you find an average nigerian student who is a personal support worker or if he has graduated from a college if he has graduated from a college huh? oh my god these guys work non-stop 80 hours a week 70 hours a week instead of 40 the hours are just begging them there is a lot of hours of overtime there so i personally will recommend this to you if you are looking for maybe coming in and getting some more hours and then maybe after that better chances that's for you if you're already a nurse and you can find a nursing course please take that i must say something about nursing though with nursing courses the schools will mostly require that you have a background in biology chemistry biology chemistry and something else from your secondary school so if you didn't do biology and chemistry and if you are applying for a nursing in college there's a good chance they will turn you down so for nurses especially if you have a background in science from secondary school it's helpful guys these are the two courses that i'm recommending if you are also somebody who you have a, a background in mechanics or engineering i recommend you pick a, co a course in engineering or mechanics if you are studying or automotive uh, automotive studies which is the same as mechanics these are the people who finish and become mechanics in canada yes i know in your head you are laughing at them already mechanic in call hey misha i won't become one no. guys mechanics here they make about 90 dollars to 120 dollars an hour yes mm, yes some of us are paying, you know, they reach $50 one hour. Mechanics, they make $90 to $120. So if Africa know they respect mechanic, this place, if you come and you study mechanics to become a mechanic, or you study to become um, an electrician, or a plumber, or a carpenter in a college, these courses that Africa looks down on, these are the number one paying jobs in Canada some of the highest paying courses jobs are from what we call the handy 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 courses like mechanics plumbing carpentry guys if that is your passion and you enjoy working with your hands huh pick those courses they even have something for hair salon eh for you to come and do hair if your passion is in hair and you do them if my wife goes to the salon now nah, 80 to 100 dollars what will they pay to do hair now plenty of money so if your area is in those handy ways, choose those courses, guys. They will bless you when you come here. Those guys get paid a lot of money. The minimum wage here per hour is $15. So if somebody is making $80, $90 an hour, that's crazy money, huh? Yeah. Rania, you say, I'm coming for sure, bro, mechanic. I know this guy so well. He has a background from Toyota, Ghana. He was working there. He has a lot. Look, this guy, give him spanner. He will, <laughs> he will come out everything right now. He loves it. 
And I've told him, my brother, if you come to Canada as a mechanic, yeah? Oh, my God. Your account will look... Mwah. Your account will look... Mwah. The mechanics here make money. The plumbers make money. If I have a plumbing issue now where I call, you will see the amount where they will charge me. In Africa, we don't respect these courses. These courses are the ones making money. Nursing, these are the ones. Computer science. If you are a lover of computer and you are interested eh, and you have a background, pick an IT course. These guys make crazy money. The average person who is a software developer here, a programmer, makes about $100,000 a year, even as a starter. I know somebody who makes over 100000 a year as a programmer. Yes, I know a friend. I have a friend from Ghana who makes over $100,000 a year as a programmer. And this same person was working in Ghana. I was not even making up to 3000 a, a month. Not making 3000 Ghanaian cities, which is about $500, guys, a month. Was not even making that. Do you see that? I have shared the names of the top two schools that are cheaper. I hope it helps you. If you start and you get stuck, feel free to call me. I might create a WhatsApp group or something so that you guys can interact among yourself to help each other. Especially those who I have helped. You are also going to be helping those who will come so that I don't have to help everybody one at a time. My other page, which is called Canada Visa Forum hyphen African chapter, I want to turn that page into an interactive platform where we can get help from each other. For example, if Mami Abina Adolfo has already applied to this course, I will probably be asking that she helps others when they come so that we can also help each other there, guys. Join that page so that we can have live chats there when we get stuck. Somebody will be there to help you. Even if it's not me, somebody who has gotten the experience by following my page will help you with it. Now, what about those who have the money and they want to come to the big cities? It's your choice. You can come. Go ahead and pay. Go ahead and apply. Go ahead and gather your documents. And you can apply. And when you get a visa, I will personally meet you at the airport if you are in Ontario and I'll pick you and I'll give you a free ride. I do give international students free ride when they come. So I hope I can meet you and pick you at the airport when you are coming to Ontario. If you don't come into Ontario, we're going to be in touch still. All right, guys, let me also say this. There are some people who got in touch with me and they said, oh, I have seen this school. Can you confirm if it's a legit or a genuine school? I'm going to give you some few things to use to determine if a school is legit. You might want to write this down. I'm going to give you one or two tips to know if a school you are looking into as a college is legit. No teacher courses. There are some courses in the colleges where you can get something in teaching and stuff like that. Please remember, there are so many programs. Just go through them. You'll find something in your field, okay? The most popular courses are nursing, uh, international business management, personal support worker, critical caregiver or life caregiver course. The Filipinos like this course a lot, life caregiver. They are like people who take care of uh, sick people at home and all of that. They make a lot of money. They make a lot of money. Life caregiver, personal support worker. They make a lot of money. IT, IT, anything IT, you are hot cake here. Plumbing, carpentry, these courses, hairdo, hairstyling. If you find a course there, please go ahead and choose it if that's what you want. If you can't and you have a difficulty, I will do a whole life session where I go into the programs that people choose. All right. Teaching courses, you can also, if you want to do something in teaching, just go to the courses. You might find something similar to that. Anything that has to do with children, that one too, they pay money. Hmm? For example, early childhood education or, or early child care, something, something child, they, they pay money. It means that you come work with Oibo children or uh, Canadian kids and those jobs, they pay a lot. They pay a lot. All right. How can you spot a good college? Or a fake college from a, a good college. One, every legit college or institution at the tertiary level has a unique code called DLI. DLI. It stands for Designated Learning Institution Number. 
designated learning institution number. Every college that is legit has one. So in fact, if you go to your Google and you type Niagara College, does it have a designated learning institution number? Google will tell you, yes, this is their designated institution number. What is the designated learning institution number for New Brunswick Community College? They will tell you that. So that is the number one thing. Research and find out if that school has a designated learning institution number. It's a unique code, like an accreditation code, given to them by the accreditation board in Canada to show that they can operate. If a school doesn't have it, you want to stay away. That's the number one thing. The second thing is this. You see, when you come into a college, what is your strategy? For you to become a permanent resident after your school, if you went to a college, the requirement is that you do a two years of college education. I'm going to say this again. Anybody who wants to get their papers to stay in Canada permanently like I am, if you chose to go to a college, you need to complete a minimum of two years of college education. It doesn't mean you want you have to start straight as a two year. You can start with just a one year program. And then when you finish and you come to Canada and you finish, you can apply again and do another one year. That is what a lot of people do. They come and start with a one year one. And then by the time they would have finished, they would have saved money. They would have worked, you know, they would have done some work, 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 save money and use the money to pay for the second year. If you don't do a two year program, you cannot qualify for permanent residency. It's just a minimum requirement, minimum two years of college education. Do you have to do all at a go? No. Start with one year. And then by the time you finish your one year, you can start. In fact, most of my, my friends, that's what they do. They come, they do the one year, and then whilst they are doing it, they are doing part-time work, part-time work. And then they save money. By the time the one year is almost done, they would have registered for a second year. And then by the time they finish that, then they apply for their permanent residence. And then they become Canadian permanent residents within one year after they finish school. Now, this is what happens, guys. When you finish a two years of a college diploma, you are eligible to stay in the country and work full time after you finish the school. What is a full time work here? It means your hours are not restricted. You can work unlimited. However, when you're a student, as an international student, you are limited to only 20 to 24 hours, depending on what they write on your permit. It's between 20 to 24 hours work a week. Part time. By the moment you finish school, you can work full-time. But for you to be able to work full-time, you need a work permit when you finish school. And this is where the colleges are helpful. If the college you went to is not legit, you are not and never going to get a work permit when you finish school. You have to return to your country. I'm going to say this again. If you carefully did not choose the right school to come as a college, and you even get a visa and you come. When you finish, your work permit is in jeopardy. You cannot get work permit. And without work permit, you are almost not going to become a permanent resident. So you see, you want to pick the right school that when you finish, you know you can get a work permit called postgraduate work permit. <coughs> the work permit is called postgraduate work permit postgraduate work permit. It is a work permit which is given to people who have finished a master's or a PhD or people who have finished a degree or people who have finished a college for two years. You get that permit. A postgraduate work permit is between one to three years. Most people get a two years postgraduate work permit after they finish school or a three years postgraduate work permit. What it means is that Whilst you are working full time after you finish school using your work permit of two or three years, you are using that time as well to apply to become a permanent resident. So when I finished school, I had a two years postgraduate work permit just because I did a master's. And then when I got that two years postgraduate work permit, I began working full time. That was when I was doing crazy jobs, guys. Taxi driving, working in a factory. I was doing three jobs at a time just to save money, save money and go and marry my wife. And then whilst I was working, I was also applying for my permanent resident. 
Do you see that? But without a postgraduate work permit, I wouldn't have been eligible to live in the country after I finished school. I would have gone back home. The postgraduate work permit allows you to live in the country, Canada. So here is why. Why am I even talking about that, guys? I want everybody to try this if you can. I'm going to mention a college. Check it out yourself. One of the ways to know if a college is legit is this. Google their name and type this. Das, I'm going to use Josephine name. Let's say Josephine Bafo is the name of a college. Huh? Let's use that. Does Josephine Bafo allow me, does, a, does schooling in Josephine Bafo allow me to get a postgraduate work permit after I graduate? Google it and see the result. You are going to see people who have been duped in the past through some fake schools and they are going to write and say, no, 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 you cannot get it. I'm going to give you a school right now. Let's try it with this school. Hmm? The school is called Khan College. Everybody should type that so that I can know you get the spelling right. Khan College. C-A-N space. Then you add college. Khan College Canada. Khan College Canada. The Khan is in capital letters for some reason. Huh? The rest is in small letters. Khan College. Khan College Canada. I want you to go on Google right now and type. Can I get a postgraduate work permit if I go to Khan College? Everybody should type that. I want people to come back and give me a response right now. I'm not going to continue until somebody gives me a feedback from Google. I want you to tell how to spot a fake school or a non-accredited school from a good one. So please go ahead and do that. Can I get a postgraduate work permit if I go to Khan College? Somebody should type that. That is the spelling. Collins, thank you. God bless you. That is it. Google it. Can I get a postgraduate work permit if I go to Khan College? Somebody should go and research that. And post it on the page so that we can help everybody. Can I get a postgraduate work permit if I go to Khan College? I want everybody to go and try that. I'm going to try again and put Mama to sleep. And I'm going to be back to see what somebody has posted from Google. <sighs> She's going to wake up. I won't try it. I know her. <laughs> Can College Canada. Is somebody Googling that? Can I get a postgraduate work permit if I go to Can College Canada? This is a college in Canada, but I want you to Google whether you will be eligible to get a postgraduate work permit if you go to Can College. See what Google and others are telling you in reviews about this college. Post it here to help everybody. If you've already found it, please post it here. I'm going to be done in the next 10 minutes, guys. I have an appointment at 9.30 with a lawyer uh, who is helping me work on uh, a house that i'm just buying the lawyer is helping me close the deal um please post it right away if you can i'm not going to continue until somebody posts i don't want to give you free information all the time i want to teach you how to find it yourself so let somebody google would i be eligible for postgraduate work permit if i go to can college or you can even type what are the reviews on can college what are the reviews what are people saying about can college post it there if you find something Please post it there. I'm going to be back. She's already trying to get up. I like this. Quas very much if by now someone in flag graduates are watching Trini Jonas. Yeah, I personally like that guy for being honest with the truth. Um, except for maybe the insulting part, which I don't agree with. Uh yeah. Guys, did anybody find something on Khan College? 
What are the reviews on Khan College? Did anybody find something? I'm surprised nobody has posted anything. Did anybody post something? Did I miss it? Did I miss it? If I try doing it using my phone, there is a good chance it will disconnect the live feed. So I don't want to use my phone doing it. But has anybody tried Googling the reviews on Khan College? All right, I'm going to make it simple for you guys. Yes, does Khan College have a postgraduate work permit? Does it give? Will I be, use the word, will I be eligible for postgraduate work permit? Will I be eligible for a postgraduate work permit if I go to Khan College? That should be the word. Or you can simply type, what are the reviews? What are the reviews on Khan College in Canada? You'll be surprised. Guys, this is what you're going to find. You're going to find people write that, hey, be careful. Don't go to Khan College. If you go there, you will do your studies all right, but you will not be eligible for a postgraduate work permit. The Canadian government does not rec rec um, recognize Khan College as an institution or as a college that when you go to, you can use that to apply for a work permit. So what it means is that if you go to that college, Josephine, can you post that? Thank you, Josephine. I, I believe you. I've seen it there. Can you post it? Let, let it help people. Post the link so people can click on it. Guys, if you go to this college and you apply and you get your visa, the government, the, the embassy might give you the visa, but you are shooting yourself in the foot. You will finish. You will never get your work permit. You will have to return back home. All right? You have to return back home. Damilola? Okay, look at what it says. Damilola, let me read yours. It says, regardless of the postgraduate program, sir, you can't get a work permit. Wow. Did you hear that? But there is somebody who will be desperate looking for a Canadian college who will not know how to find the fake from the good or the ones... You see, this is not to say this school is fake. I'm being honest with you. It simply means... Some people can go and study in this school, provided they are not looking for a postgraduate work permit to live in Canada. I'm not trying to say they are fake. Please get me here. You see, I live in Canada now. I don't need a postgraduate work permit. I'm beyond that. So I can go to Khan College and go and study. But if you are coming here as an international student where you won't stay, I beg, make you no go to this school. I'm not bad mouthing it. I'm only saying in terms of being eligible for a postgraduate work permit after you finish school, Please do not choose this school. Does it make sense to you? This is actually from an experience. Somebody that I know applied to this college, got the admission all right, only to find out he can't be eligible for this. What it means is that your admission fee, your application fee of $100 is gone. Yeah. So I am teaching you the two ways to find the appropriate school. One. It needs to have a designated learning institution number. You can Google the school and say, does it have a designated learning institution number? That's the first thing. But that is not even enough. Number two, Google. Will I be eligible for a postgraduate work permit if I go to Seneca College, New Brunswick Community College? You will get the answer, yes. I hope that helps you. This is about colleges. Colleges are one of the most popular ways to come to Canada. Even if you don't have the money, you could target the two colleges that I shared at the beginning of this. I will be happy if as many of you choose these two colleges, especially from the point that their fees are cheaper. There are people who choose expensive colleges. Niagara College, Seneca College, Centennial College, Humber College, Mohawk College. You see, these colleges are good. They meet all the requirements for you to become a permanent resident if you finish and get your permit. But the fees are expensive. sixteen to $17,000. So if you can't afford that, try the schools that I shared with you. That is it for colleges, guys. Come to a college, get a visa. Whilst you are working, whilst you are in school, doing a college education, you are eligible to do 20 hours of work. I know they won't give uh, um, on uh, advice, we're no good. But there is a way, once. guys, believe me. If you understand what they try to tell you. Eh? When you enter the country, you can survive. Believe me, you will survive. Even the most important thing is getting the visa. When you enter, you go survive. I'm telling you. Read my eyes. You will survive. Even if they're saying that 20 hours pay if you do, you will survive. Read my lips. You will survive it. 
I'm telling you this. You will survive it. And in just a year and a half, you will finish. The, college, the colleges that say two years, two years, it's not even a full two years. It's actually about 15 to 16 months. You are done. Between 15 and 16 months, you are done. Those who came last year, August, they were, they were done by April this year. Um, no, those who came in 20... Those who came in 2019, August, for two years programs, they are done by April this year, which is a year and a half. By now, they are applying for their permanent residence whilst they have their work permit ready. A lot of Nigerians use this. A lot of Ghanaians now are using this. So if you finish a secondary school in Ghana and you don't even want to go to Lagon, any university, and your parents can afford, come here and do your secondary school graduates can even come. Secondary school graduates, you need to tell your parents if they can afford. Let them sponsor you. Guys, if you are in Nigeria, share this video. There are so many Nigerians who are sending their kids to go and study in Ghana. And they are paying $5,000 in University of Ghana, blah, blah, blah. That's my school. I know it. International fees is expensive for Nigerians and other people. You see, I'm not bad mouthing my own country. But if you can afford, use that same five, 6000 and send them to Canada. Simple as that. Instead of sending them to a university in Ghana where you are still going to pay a highest fees anyways, why don't you send them to Canada? Designated Learning Institution Nama, you got it right, sir. God bless you. Daniel Adam Gose, I will call you when I get there. Oh my God. I will sit with you and we will chat and we'll have some drink. Huh? All right. The colleges again, I won't go back, guys. I'm not going to go back. Start from the beginning, okay? Start from the beginning of the video. You're going to get it. Okay, it makes my videos too long when I keep going back and back and back. All right, now let me take questions about colleges. I'm going to talk about what to do after you gain an admission. But guys, this is what I'll be happy about. If you apply to the colleges and you get an admission, share your good news on my forum for visa, my visa forum. Let people know you've made progress. Let's celebrate the success. No which will stop you from coming to Canada. Some of us don't even share some of this information because we are so afraid of witches. Hmm? Say, if I tell somebody now, witchcraft will stop me from me. I don't believe in witchcraft too. The power will do over me. They big, too big. Mm? So please, let's share. Let's build people with positive sharing. Okay? Guys, anybody with a question, let me take them. I'm done with colleges. If you come into my inbox asking me questions about this, if I've covered it, I won't respond to you. I won't respond to you. You can tell what I go through just to come live. Hmm? You can tell I've had to have my baby on my chest just to be live and share. So do not come into my inbox asking me about something I've already talked about. I won't respond. It is not lack of respect or me being rude. It is just you not being thorough with my page. All right. Anybody with a question? Oh, I like this. Abdul al Fatao al Muslim. If I'm surviving in Ghana, why not in Canada, my brother? You survive, oh. Eh? Some things that I can't say some things on it. But look, even if they say 20 hours, when you come here, read my lips. I say you go survive. Me, I go tell you, you go survive now. Hi, trust our African brothers. We survive all the time. We, 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 we raise the money and we go for the second year programs. Okay, so if you go to a college, you need a two years of studies to be eligible for postgraduate work permit. But if you did a master's on scholarship, you need only one year to be eligible for postgraduate. You don't need a two years in a master's program. You only need one year to be eligible for postgraduate work permit. So I, for example, I did a one year of master's and that made me eligible for a postgraduate work permit. And I used that to apply for my permanent resident whilst I was working. Anybody with questions? Ice Nyax, my favorite guy now. The witches are all dead now. And I believe that. Thank you so much, my brother. Um... Grace Lavi, I'm very grateful for responding to this question. Grace, I'm happy you've been in my inbox a lot. You've been in my inbox. I'm happy I'm, uh, you've gotten some value. And uh, Mr. Omez, if you have national diploma, do you apply with your ND result or do you start from fresh? I like that. Guys, remember what I said, the minimum is secondary school. So even if you have a diploma, I will recommend you start with your transcript from secondary school and then add your national diploma transcript to it. In short, add all your transcript that you have when you're applying. I starting from your secondary school, but you must know that the minimum is secondary school certificate or transcript. So add your diploma, but add your secondary school ones as well. Joel Ahmed, how about scholarship accessibility? Joel, you are not a follower of my page. I'm sorry to say this. If you're following this, you would have noticed that I have actually covered all of this already. Okay. 
Esther Norte, second year MPhil. Can I apply? Second year MPhil. So you can apply depending on whether you want a college or not. Remember, we say colleges, you have to pay your own fees. You are an MPhil person, meaning that you have a degree already. So if your MPhil is an ongoing thing, you haven't finished, and you have a bachelor's degree, and your bachelor's degree is very strong, you could apply for the scholarships. Watch my previous video on scholarships. But if you don't think your degree is strong enough, maybe you had a third class, very low, and you think you want to come through a college, yes, you can apply. Remember, guys, the minimum is secondary education. So, so long as you have a minimum of secondary school education, don't worry, you can apply. In Felix, Ahmed, Ahmed, come on, I don't want to miss your question. Does journalism pay better in Canada because I'm into journalism in Ghana? I can't speak to that. I have I know two or three people, they are not my direct friends who are working with the uh, Canada Broadcasting Corporation. I believe they do pay better. But I will tell you this, guys, the jobs that are selling today are the skills with hands, mm? computer in hands. So if you are a software person, good. Health, good. Pharmacy, nursing, medicine. These guys make crazy money here. If you are also somebody who knows how to use your hand, huh? doing hair, Fixing car, plumbing, carpentry. I'm not going to tell you not to study journalism, but I just can't speak so much about how much they make. All right? I can't speak. But remember what I said. The average person in Canada, even with a secondary school education, lives a better life than the average person in Africa. Yes. Your one month or your two month salary as a worker here can buy you a car. Whilst in Ghana or Nigeria, you need a lifetime savings with prayers. <laughs> I can buy a car anytime I want to. Just because the lifestyle here can afford, can help you have that. All right. Tijani Babadi has come be smart. Uh, Tijani, who are you referring to anyway? Uh, in Felix Bentil, I'm a certified ethical hacker as well. Good. So that means if I get you right in, you mean you are a computer guy, right? Please look for a course in computing if you want to come to colleges. IT, you will get paid a lot. You get paid a lot when you finish. If you're eligible for, if you think you can get it, uh, you have a bachelor's, which is strong, watch my video on scholarships. Okay. Esther Norte, I've already talked about teachers. Grace, please, concerning the college admission, do you pay for your own accommodation or there is a free accommodation? There is no free accommodation, guys. You need to pay for it. I'm going to say this for the last time, guys. Remember I said if you prove to the embassy that you've been able to pay the fees and you have the receipt from the school, during the visa application, you need to also prove to the embassy that you have at least 10,000 Canadian dollars in your bank account through your bank statement, with which you'll be able to take care of your living expenses. One second, the landlady is up. Now, so what happens is that when you come, you are the one going to pay for your own. You are the one going to pay for your own. Um, yeah, my lawyer is calling me now. I have to end the session. My call is coming from my lawyer, so I'm going to just close soon. Your accommodation, your food, the school does not provide. Colleges don't provide you with anything. You pay for your own accommodation. I will do a series, another session where I talk about how to go about those things and the cost, the average cost, okay? I hope that answers. So remember, when you're coming, you need extra money to at least pay your rent where you live. And guys, this is the beauty of it. Unlike Ghana, wicked country Ghana, because it's filled with wicked leaders. Unlike Nigeria, filled with corrupt and greedy leaders. Unlike South Africa and any other African country filled with greedy leaders. With Canada, if you are coming to rent a house here, you don't need a two years advance, though. You don't even need a one-year advance. You don't even need a six-month advance. Wicked countries say you need three years advance. Here, all you need is a one-month rent. That's all. So long as you can pay for the first one-month rent, you are done. I am a landlord, guys. I have real estate. Here, on top of me, I have a tenant there. All she paid was one-year rent. I cannot, legally, you cannot charge more than one year rent. Sorry, did I say one year? Wow. 
you cannot charge more than one month rent. So if you are paying just 400, all you need is a 400 dollars, you're good. Wicked, wicked countries will say three years advance, two years advance. In fact, they will set up something called rent control board and they will never even help the average tenants. The poor man in Africa is having to have to pay two years in advance. It's called wickedness. We will meet all of them in hellfire. How come smart countries are doing just one month rent and poor countries are doing three years? Can't you see that they are, they are tasking you for life? I hope this answers your question. So, so long as you can, you can afford to pay your one month rent, when you come in, remember you have a work permit that allows you to do 20 hours of work a week. Huh? Your 20 hours work alone a week can afford to help you pay your monthly rent even as you live here. All right. I'm going to use my example here. When I was at, uh, uh, on scholarship in Canada, I was also a teaching assistant. It came as part of the package. They gave me a job as a teaching assistant. And my monthly salary was about $900. So they, they here they pay weekly, right? They pay your salary weekly. But my school was paying me every two weeks. So every two weeks, I was making $450. My rent was $350. So what I did was that when I get a one month salary of $900, I use 350 out of that to pay my rent. And the remaining 550 was in my pocket. And that was what I was using for my you know, cost of living, food and stuff like that. I hope this helps you. There is no age limit. Canada doesn't discriminate based on age. They just, they, they just go by qualifications, guys. Is that okay? Thank you so much. No other question. I'm going to end here. Please remember, if you come into my inbox with questions, I need this. I have covered scholarships. I have covered colleges. We are done with schooling now. I'm going to go into permanent resident. On my live sessions, I'm going to talk about how to come here without school. If you don't want to come in school, how can you come straight as a permanent resident if you're already a professional? So share this with all your professional friends. Let them join the page. I'm going to come live. How can you come here if you're a professional accountant, a chartered accountant? Um, how can you come here if you're a professional software engineer already and you've gone to school already and you are practicing? These next videos are going to be for you. Those who don't need school and are coming straight as a permanent resident, the next video is going to be for you. God bless you. Please share and share. And remember, I want you to make this the number one page on campuses so that we will not have unemployment crisis. There will be a future for our, our, our African youth. God bless you. Bye-bye.